Okay, now we will see tRNA. So we have seen rRNA, mRNA. Now we will see tRNA. The structure of tRNA is important, very important. Question comes from tRNA along with the structure. From entrance point of view also, it is very important. So we are going to see first the basic things about tRNA, the features, okay? The tRNA was first, wait, 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 wait. The mRNA, mRNA, the scientist was given by Jacob and Monad, okay? Jacob and Monad. So you correct this, okay? Correct this. The mRNA, the scientist was first given by Jacob and Monad, not Crick. tRNA was given by, discovered by Crick. Okay, Jacob and Monad discover mRNA. That's you correct it. Okay, coming back to tRNA. So tRNA it tells its meaning again. T means transfer. So it transfer. It stands for transfer RNA. Okay. What it transfer? It transfer activated amino acid for protein synthesis. It transfer activated amino acid for protein synthesis so it it transfer activated amino acid for protein synthesis you write the sentence okay nicely it transfer activated amino acid for protein synthesis so it was first discovered by crick crick okay so you make it correct the letter uh, earlier one the mrna that is jacob and monad okay next thing you need to know that trna are the smallest rna smallest RNA it has many name they are also call it as a soluble RNA it also call it as a soluble RNA because it dissolve in one molar solution of sodium chloride okay it dissolve in one molar solution of sodium chloride solution okay remember that's why it is called as soluble RNA it, it can dissolve the next thing it is also call it as a adapter RNA so it has many name it also call it as a adapter RNA okay remember the next thing uh, it constitute about 15 percent of total RNA so it makes 15 percent of RNA structure then the shape is like the shape of tRNA is clover leaf shape clover leaf shape have you seen clove okay so just like that leaf shape clover leaf shape so we need to see the structure the diagram of tRNA so these are the uh, important features of tRNA if the question comes it may come for two mark or three mark okay so uh, it is it stands for transfer RNA it transfer activated amino acid for protein synthesis it was first discovered by Crick and it is the smallest RNA and it is also called it as a soluble RNA because it dissolves in one molar solution of sodium chloride it is also called adapter RNA and it constitutes 50% of total RNA and the shape is clover leaf shape all right <coughs> So next, we will see the shape of tRNA. So the shape is clover shape, like clover leaf like shape. Just like that, that's it. This gold gold like structure, we call it as a loop, L double O P, okay, loop. And this structure, the branch, we call this as a stem. So one end has fifth prime, the other end has three prime, or it's group three. Whenever there is a three prime, they're going to bind other molecule. Okay, because it has a functional group three, or it's group three. So it is going to bind other molecule. Okay, so we're going to name one by one. The right side of my uh, diagram, this loop, we call it as a uh, T loop okay T loop we call it as a T loop uh, and we also call it as a T psi C loop 
T psi. This is the formula of or symbol of psi. So we call it a T psi C loop. It has again another name. We can also call it as a GTPCG loop. Okay, GTPC GTPCG loop. So it has three names. Remember, guanine thymine, cytosine, and guanine. This P it stands for pseudo uracil so in t loop it contain one abnormal nitrogenous base this is abnormal nitrogenous base we call pseudo uracil okay its loop has a function we will come to that later this you know this like structure we call it as a variable loop variable loop the structure which is at the bottom down this structure we call it as a anti codon loop anti codon loop and in my left diagram this laddu like structure we call it as a d loop and d stands for di hydro uridine di hydro uridine loop okay so each loop has a specific function t loop it helps in i hope it is visible it helps in recognition of ribosome okay it helps in recognition of ribosome anticodon loop which nitrogenous bases is called it as anticodon we will see that when we discuss genetic code okay anticodon and d loop it helps in recognition of amino acid okay it helps in recognition of amino acid okay this is structure is very important again draw it nicely see three prime OH group it binds the activated amino acid so it is going to carry all the activated amino acid into the ribosome and then the process for the formation of protein will take place because for the formation of protein amino acids are required and that should be activated amino acid we have seen in first year chapter biomolecules right a long chain of amino acid makes the structure of protein and the structure of protein we have discussed primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structure we have discussed so here we are going to see how actual the process takes place for the formation of protein right so first of all the tRNA is going to carry all the activated amino acid the first amino acid has to be activated and they are going to carry at the third prime of uh, tRNA because the third prime always has the functional group that is OS group this OS group has the capability to bind another molecule so they're going to bind all the activated amino acid and they're going to carry all the activated amino acid almost 20 amino acid they're going to carry and then we help in the formation of protein uh, through the process called transcription and then tr translation we will discuss okay so these are the structure of uh, tRNA okay so that's it remember all right so and be careful this strain is shorter as compared to this strain don't make it equal length okay so the round round structure try to make it beautiful structure you know okay so t loop has many name remember it has been re ribosome recognition okay d loop it helps in recognition of amino acid first this loop going to recognize the amino acid okay this loop is going to recognize amino acid the activated amino acid this loop is going to recognize first they recognize they're going to bind here the activated amino acid and they're going to carry 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 to the ribosome and then this loop t loop is going to help in recognition of ribosome then the process takes place and the role of anticodon loop we're going to discuss when we discuss translation process the anticodon loop the anticodon the anticodon anticodon are AUG no not AUG UAG UU UAA UAG UAA 
UGN. So there are three types of antigodon we will discuss when we discuss uh, genetic code. Let me uh, antigodon. Let me give an example. Okay, I'll give you an example here about antigodon. It's going to stop the process of translation. This antigodon is going to stop the process of translation. We will see the exact rule. Let me not right now. Let's discuss in details in translation process. For here, this is just the figure of tRNA. Practice karo, exam mein aate, okay? So this is all our TR, uh, rRNA. Now we are going to compare DNA and RNA. And we have already discussed in first year, we have already compared DRNA, what DRNA? DNA and RNA. I think we don't need to compare, right? We have already discussed in first year. What you want me to do? Say. Shall I go or not? Let's do it. I know you have forgotten already. You're enjoying too much at your home, right? It's your time. You will really realize later on. If you don't study, you will realize. It is a golden opportunity for you. You are staying in your home. You are getting your home environment. You just need to focus on your study. Just sit in your table. Open your laptop or phone. Just see our video and study. See, that is a golden opportunity. You don't have to come to school. You know, you don't have to fight with coronavirus. You don't have to fight with the summer days. Just sit in your home and study. It is a golden opportunity. Those who will do that, nikal jayega. And those who are enjoying, you keep on enjoying your whole life. Then you will realize later on, and that will be too late. So now it has, it is your golden opportunity. Just study well. Focus on your study. Okay. Do not waste your time. Let's compare. How many times should I have to say this structure? I know you already know this. This is the structure of DNA we have already seen and this is the structure of RNA. Okay, the only difference is in case of DNA at the two carbon number the OH is replaced with the single H. Okay, the OH is replaced by single H. So first of all, let's write DNA is a genetic material of human. You already know I should not write this thing. It is a genetic material of virus. some virus okay some basic things now coming to the structure in case of dna at a two carbon number there is one oh uh, there is only one h at in case of dna but in case of rna there it has two os mean it has two functional group okay i'm going to t explain you write by your own write by your own i will just show you the way you are grown up now. Study smart, okay? Okay. Where, where, right? Okay. At, in case of DNA, at a two carbon number, there is only one H. Okay. That means the DNA has only one functional group three because this OH is binds with nitrogen species. This OH binds with phosphate group. So here we have. DNA has only one OH group 3. So, less the functional group, the molecule will less reactive. Less the reactive, the molecule will be more stable. So, less functional group, less reactive. Less reactive, more stable. That's why DNA is our genetic material because the characteristic of genetic material was it should show stability physically and um, chemically, right? In case of RNA, it has two functional group free. So more functional group free, 
more reactive more reactive less stable okay so you write it down 4 point 5 point 6 point 30 point thousand point you write it by yourself as many as you can okay so you know you understood you write it by yourself so this is about the dna and rna so i think you can write by your own this we have already discussed this in first year but still here also you need to write it down now in exam if the question asks write the molecular structure of dna so that is the molecular structure of dna this 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 now if the question asks draw the double helical structure of dna so we need to draw that double helical structure okay which was given by Watson and Crick. That is the structure you need to draw. But if the molecular structure is given, you need to draw this molecular structure. Okay. Now differences, right? The differences between DNA and RNA. If this kind of question comes, so always make a chart and compare those two. Again, I'm telling. If you do so, I'm going to tear your paper and throw it off in a garbage. So always make a chart. The diagram is not necessary. It's for you to understand. Okay, so if you forget the points, you know, remember the diagram, you can draw this in a rough paper in exam, draw it in a rough paper and you know, by looking at the diagram, you can write by your own and you can add some additional thing by yourself also, if you know, okay. So this is all about DNA and RNA. In the next video lecture, we are going to study genetic code, maybe. So let's see, okay. So, <clears throat> so study well, stay focused, stay home, stay safe. Uh, most probably it is going to get open yeah on next month maybe let's see if things goes well hopefully we will meet soon so till then please study